What's up traders? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk Forex video here. Today is Friday, May 10th. Anybody new to these videos, what I do here is I go over a full breakdown of the Forex markets. I show you guys what technical analysis is going on with all the US dollar pairs, the most heavily traded, and then I go into my personal watch list, trades that I have on my radar for the coming week. Show you guys a little bit of what I'm looking at, what trades I'm anticipating on forming, and how I'll be looking to react to certain conditions in the markets. Um, go over a little bit of fundamentals, show you guys why some of the movements on the technical charts are happening the way that they are according to the fundamental supply and demand with the news and the macroeconomics going on around the world. And I go over a little bit of the events of what to look out for next week in our trading, as well as the top performing and underperforming currency pairs for the week behind us. All right, guys, so I'm gonna start real quickly going over how each pair performed this week and what we're looking at. As you guys can see here, these show all the individual currency pairs performance. And you can see the US dollar doesn't have a change because it's all pinned up against the dollar. As you guys can see, we had a massive risk off move this week. We had a lot of um, sell off going on in the stock markets. We have a lot of correction going on in the equity markets. Some of the worst back to back days of the year this year, it all revolves around China and the US's relationship and trade tariffs. Um, as you guys can see, the yen outperformed everything else significantly. And we had the pound, New Zealand, Aussie in the bottom half of the pairs performance. So I'm gonna go ahead now and hop into the charts and see what we have going on there before I jump into a little bit of the fundamentals. So starting with the most important pair, the Euro dollar, the most heavily traded pair in the Forex markets. Um, as you guys can see, we are still following this downward channel. Lower lows, lower highs as we're making our way down. We did break below this strong weekly support and have now come back up above it. As you guys can see, we're now getting into our dynamic dynamic support and resistance area of our moving averages, right? We have our 20 day moving average here in blue. We have our 50 day moving average here in red. And as you can see, we had a first rejection wick to this area looking left price rejected it in the past before it's acted as support in the past before. So we do have a nice little level here. And recently here today on Friday, we have tapped the 50 day SMA and pulled off. What this is telling me is we're, re we're approaching the top of our channel range. We are in our dynamic support and resistance level. We're making a lower high within a downtrend after a lower low. And right now what we are looking at is potentially the end of this correction move and the potential opportunity to now catch the next leg of our lower low. To get down the lower time frame a little bit here, you guys can see where price has been moving higher here and where we're now reaching this resistance level where price is getting exhausted, some sellers are stepping into the market. It is Friday, so we're not gonna be taking any trades, but looking into next week, we will be looking for opportunities to catch this next move to the downside and try to ride this lower leg move in this downtrend. Taking to the pound dollar, you guys can see we were moving downward here, broke above resistance, broke above trend line, broke above the 50 day moving average, have now pulled back, but we're on this strong support level now that is most likely going to be our higher low in the next impulsive move higher. As you guys can see, we have a nice spinning top candle here, which is an indecision candle on an area support, potentially showing sellers have lost momentum. And now buyers are coming into the market. This is another one where we can keep an eye on the lower time frames to see where we want to get in. This is our correction. You can see we're rejecting this support level now, and we could look for a break of potentially this resistance here at around 130.40 to try to catch the move up higher next, um, to catch a nice potential 100 pip move up to 3140 to 3160 level up top here. Dollar Swiss franc is at a nice opportunity for longs, similar to the other pairs, but now we have the dollar in front. So we have um, an uptrend. We have a correction to the downside. Price is now hitting a very strong weekly level, very strong support, psychological dollar parity line and this is where we could see some buyers step into the market and potentially look for long opportunities next week off of this support level. Dollar yen continues to move lower, hitting a strong low here, but we did set a new lower low all the way down. We have our 20 about to cross below our 50 day moving average, broke the uptrend, broke the trend line, gapped down below all these levels and have continued to sell off. Now looking like we're closing with a spinning top and decision candle here with a lower rejection wick. On this strong support level, we could see price bounce higher and potentially rally up to around this resistance here at 111 and then look for potential shorts off of that. Or you could play the counter trend move and look for a long opportunity off this bottom. Maybe we get a little bit of a double bottom pattern forming here on the hourly, it'll probably look a little cleaner. 
yep, we got a little double bottom pattern here. So you could be playing this counter trend move and try to catch that ride up to the next lower high before shorting or wait for the trend to come to you, get this correction move and then go short from there. Dollar CAD is now pretty much range bound. We broke out of this pennant pattern, sold off, found support, and have now been ranging between the high and the low, higher low, higher high, ranging between the two. So we'd like to see a break of um, the low or the high of this range. You could be a range bound trader. We're now at the bottom of the range hitting support. You could ride this back up to the top if that's your style, but either way, we're in a range now. We'd like to see something happen before we try to make our next move. New Zealand dollar, still moving lower. Pushed below here, made another lower low, pulling back a little bit now. Still respecting this lower trend line, but nothing really jumps out of me at this pair. I think we're due for a correction before we look for anything short on this pair. And if you want to go long off this bottom support, could be a setup there, but not my cup of tea. Aussie dollar, a little bit more price action to base this off of, right? So we've been moving lower, set a strong lower low, rallied up for a lower high, came back down, set another lower low, rallied back up, range bound, and as you can see, um, we did have a moving average cross to the downside, but we're on a very strong weekly support and taking it down to a lower time frame. You can see we've got a double bottom, one here, two here, and we are within a falling wedge. A falling wedge within a downtrend is a reversal pattern. So we're on a strong weekly support. We've got chart patterns, two of them, a pattern within a pattern. We've got a wedge and a double bottom on support. So we could see price break out to the upside and maybe then look for long, uh, short opportunities once we hit resistance. But right now we're looking more long than anything on this pair. All right, so that takes us over to what we're watching this week, what we have going on for the coming trades this week ahead. And we do have a lot more on our radar this week, not too active this past week um, as we were just waiting for some moves to develop. But the yen is a big, big, big story of this coming week. So we can see the yens continue to get be strong, right? Continue to move lower on these pairs with the yen being the second pair in this mix. That means that we have seen a strong yen. Now, what we'd like to see is a little bit of weakness, a little bit of a rally in this pair here. We have this nice bearish crossover up to this resistance level here at 77.70, and then look for short opportunities to try to catch this continued strength in the yen if we see it continue middle to end of next week. Another pair here with the New Zealand yen, um, strong move to the downside, hitting weekly support. We'd like to see it rally up to around this area to look for shorts to catch that next leg lower. And guys, all these yen pairs are going to look pretty similar here. Um, we do have a bearish engulfing here off of this support level on CAD yen. As we're hitting this support level here, we are bouncing. And I'd like to see short opportunities up in this resistance around 82.50 to 83 level where this red line is. That'd be a nice short opportunity to look to catch this next wave lower. Swiss franc yen, similar story. We made a strong lower low push. Um, now we're rallying off of it. We're gonna look for shorts around this weekly support that was now broken, now acting as resistance. We'd like to see price rally up to it and look for shorts off there. Euro yen, another clean uh, potential short opportunity. We've been setting lower lows, lower highs. This was our lower low. We got a nice hammer candle, bearish reversal candle, showing some bullish momentum with this daily bullish engulfing here afterwards. Now I'd like to see price rally up a little bit, find resistance up here, and then try to catch the short for the next impulse. Pound yen broke out of this very strong range we've been watching. We were calling for a potential long off the bottom of this range like we caught the prior week here, but this week price blew right through it. Continued to move lower and is now stalling out, so maybe we get a little bit of a rally and then find resistance on this prior support to potentially find this short and catch that next move lower. Next pair I like for this week, Euro Aussie, hitting strong resistance, upper rejection wick, Shooting car, shooting star candle, got a nice doji. Now small body wick on either end at the top of this strong resistance. Would look for price to now break this counter trend line and correct down to around this 159 level support here before potentially catching along, but you could be going short off of this resistance here as well. Pound Swiss franc had a nice strong move higher, taking our Fibonacci out. You can see this retracement from the low to the high right around the 50% FIB. It's also a very strong support level. We don't have any bullish momentum indicators at all right now. We're hitting the 50 SMA as well, but we still have some bearishness in these candles. So we'd like to see price find support, maybe a bearish engulfing pattern, lower time frame chart pattern off this zone to give us some confirmation that price is likely ending this exhaustion and ready for the next impulse leg higher. Pound New Zealand push higher, reversed off that. You can see this big wick here was from New Zealand central bank hiking, uh, cutting interest rates, caught the markets off guard. 
Um, the New Zealand dollar did recover from it though. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a correction here. Basically all week this pair just tripled lower. Would like to look for long opportunities after either more of a correction or maybe we find support here and can find a potential long opportunity off of it. Aussie New Zealand, this week it did exactly as we called. We had this impulsive push higher, pulled back to the 382 FIB. We're talking about looking for now a break of this trend line, little lower time frame trend line in here to the upside and it did exactly that. Broke the trend line, pulled back to retest it, shot all the way up to our target. As you can see, our target was up here at the prior higher high. This wick shows price went all the way up to it and then eventually rejected and came down, but that would have been a full take profit. If you would have hit this long trade, that would have taken you all the way up here for a nice 100, 120 pips, so something like that. Not really on the watch list too much this week. Just wanted to show you guys that is what happened with that call from last week's video. And New Zealand Swiss franc, another story here where we have price broke below strong support in a downtrend, lower lows, lower highs, broke out of a strong range. We'd like to see price now find exhaustion, rally up a bit, and then potentially find more selling opportunity up here at around 67.30 to then potentially find a short opportunity and ride that next wave lower. Taking us over to gold, as you guys can see, we're still respecting this wedge pattern, right? We're on a strong resistance. Price has rejected it a few times. We could respect this pattern again and move lower, or we could finally break out of the pattern, break this strong resistance, break this 50-day moving average, and potentially give us a nice long opportunity out of this pattern. This would be breaking structure, breaking resistance, breaking moving average um, resistance, and breaking trend line resistance. So a lot of confirmations we'd have here to potentially find maybe a pullback retest long, or maybe just play the long of the break of that wedge. Either way, I think gold is looking a little bit bullish here if we can break this pattern. But if this resistance hold and we see a rollover, then I could see it move back down to around one, uh, 1260 or 1280, um, somewhere down in this area, 70, sorry for gold and oil is still in this little wedge that we've got here, this little pennant. As you guys can see, pretty choppy price action this week, not too much going on. Still just ranging around down here, waiting for it to uh, make a nice move one way or the other to show us that you know buyers or sellers, supply and demand is shifting. As you guys can see, we are still on the 50 day moving average. We broke this trend line, but we are still on the 50 day moving average. So we do have a chance here to hold this pullback within the uptrend and then continue higher. And you can see we have a nice $60 barrel support here, holding price up above that level. All right, so that does it for my watch list. And for these pairs, I'm gonna go ahead and hop real quick into our fundamental analysis, what happened this past week and what we have going on for the week ahead. So jumping into the technicals for this past week, the story of the week, as I told you guys, oh, excuse me, has been um, trade wars, right? It has been the U.S. and China been the story of the week. Um, it is Friday, May 10th at 12.01 this morning, the first minute of the day on Friday. The U.S. administration, Trump president, enforced a whole new series of tariffs on China because of the failure to come to agreements on a trade deal. China rebuttaled some of the stuff that the Trump administration had in the trade deal, intellectual property rights number of other things that the Trump organization was not negotiating. That was their terms that needed to be followed. And China re rebuttaled saying they weren't going to be doing them. They would have to agree on some without them in it. So Trump decided to enforce some more tariffs on China. In response, China's going to have some sort of retaliation to it as well. So the markets are reacting badly. Stocks have been selling off all week. Um, and we've just seen that risk off environment where people are taking their money out of higher risk assets and putting them into uh, more safe haven currencies safe haven assets, bonds, things of that nature. Um, and that's been really the main, main story of the week. Yeah, it has been all about that, all about the trade talks between the US and China. So we'll have to wait and see how that develops going into next week. If China has any retaliations, the Trump administration says they have more tariffs they can do. So we're really just waiting to see, hopefully they can come up with a trade deal. Um, if not, we'll continue to see a lot of momentum and um, price action off of these um, headlines and, and trade deals. Also, the start of the week, we had a gap with a stronger yen due to the um, North Korean regime testing another ballistics missile. There's talks of them testing another one. Whenever we see that happening, that causes more instability, that causes more fear, and that causes more sell-off in the market and of this risk-off theme. So you can expect to have a strong yen when things like this are happening. So if you want to continue to play that strong yen in the coming weeks on these headlines, I think that's a good play. We'll just have to wait and see how it develops. But um, as you guys can see, we had a lot of events going on here. Retail sales had some strong numbers out of Australia. We had the Australian um, Central Bank hike rates on Tuesday. 
They hiked them from 1.25 to 1.50, 1.5%. That was massive. Um, then we had uh, New Zealand immediately after the next day or uh, later on that day, um, they cut their rates. So they were the first major central bank of the, the you know, mo more recent time that has cut interest rates. It has been a talk. Trump's been calling for it out of the U.S. Federal Reserve for them to cut rates. They thinks that they hiked too fast, wants them to cut. There's been talks of cutting coming back in to try to stimulate more um, economic growth as we've seen a little bit of a plateau and a slowdown here. And New Zealand could be the first one starting that off. So that was big news here this week out of New Zealand Central Bank. Chinese trade balance, pretty poor number here. And that's likely to only get hurt further with these tariffs being enforced. Um, new loans in China, so more Chinese data missing expectations. Trade balance out of Canada was poor. PPI out of the US was uh, as expected overall, but then the core, when you take out the core, it is uh, missing expectations. So that's not good for our inflation we've been watching. Um, then you had the pound GDP miss, but then you had manufacturing production beat. You had preliminary GDP as expected. Um, you had business investment beat as well. Um, but you know this miss could have had a lot of influence on the pound selling off continuing today. And then we had CAD unemployment rate beat expectations. Some strong numbers here out of CAD. We saw some strength in the CAD today due to that. And then we have the US um, inflation numbers missed expectations here slightly. As you can see, this is our consumer price index, the biggest inflation indicator out of the US did miss expectations here on Friday, which could have some carryover effect in the next week, potentially on a weak US dollar. Um, but next week, as you guys can see, there's not much going on fundamentally. You can see this is a much smaller view. We have Sunday, Monday, absolutely nothing going on. That means Sunday, Monday, we shouldn't be trading. Uh, Mondays aren't the best trading days in general, especially when there's not much fundamental driving force behind these charts. Then you've got on uh, Tuesday, we jump right into unemployment out of the pound, out of the UK. Um, you got our average earnings and unemployment rate. And then we've got our wage price index. This shows the growth or deflation of wage prices. This is what overall employees are getting paid in the country. Huge economic indicator. We got some GDP out of Europe. Then we've got CPI out of Canada. Very strong uh, inflation reading on Wednesday. That should have a very strong moving force on the CAD. So I'd avoid trading it around that unless you're a news trader. We have retail sales out of the US, which could cause some volatility for the dollar, followed by some unemployment rate out of Australia Wednesday night. That is going to be a pretty big mover for the Australian dollar and something we do want to have on our list and watch out for. Then Thursday, we don't really have too much going on here. Some medium event news. And then Friday, we have elections in Australia, which should have some um, impact on the Australian dollar as, you know, uncertainty or favorites or underdogs or whatever leading the polls. That does have a correlation into the Forex markets for sure, with all based around supply and demand of currencies. But all right, guys, that does it for this week's breakdown. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Don't forget to check out my full online course that I offer here at CoreFX. We have over 40 lessons packed with 50 plus hours of video content, quizzes, lectures, written material, audio material, PDFs to download, take you all the way through building your own strategy. I show you my strategies, full technical analysis, psychology, you name it, it's covered in the course. It's only $100 a month, plus you get a bonus signal room, uh, telegram chat where we share our trades throughout the week. This is $500 lifetime or $100 a month. Thank you guys. I can't thank you all enough. I appreciate you staying tuned to these videos. Please throw a like below, throw a comment if you want to share any feedback with me. And um, as always, subscribe to the page, turn on notifications so that every week when I drop these videos, you can be notified. All right, guys, thank you all very much. I hope everyone has an excellent weekend, a great trading week next week. I'm always open for questions, comments, concerns. So please feel free to reach out. Thank you guys.